everybody, it's Mark Crilly, I'm back with another video. Today I'm doing the first in what will hopefully be an ongoing series on drawing backgrounds. And uh, the type of background that I want to draw today is a forest. You know, if you go to an actual forest and stand in the middle of it, it seems like almost an impossibly complicated thing to draw. Uh, and in order to render it, I think, uh, as an illustration, you almost have to start simplifying uh, things into different uh, layers almost. And what I'm doing here is drawing a uh, kind of foreground layer that is going to be silhouetted trees. Uh, and everything that you see below this line that I'm drawing the, uh, right now is going to be colored in completely black so as to um, just sort of separate it from everything else you see. Like I said, you know, the, it's almost overwhelming the complexity of uh, nature, uh, of real nature. And uh, as an artist, sometimes you almost have to uh, impose a uh, simplicity of some kind to make it manageable. And uh, the truth is, on a sort of a foggy day, if there's a, if there's a mist in the forest, uh, you can actually see... Um, things get simplified um, by way of uh, these like foreground elements that are much darker and easier to see. I'm going to actually go in and add a few more um, vertical uh, lines here. As you can see, um, I'm focusing just on the trunks of the trees for now. And I will be adding um, individual branches and leaves and so forth. Um, later on, but uh, I think at the beginning you almost have to just uh, give yourself a break and say, you know what, I'm just going to draw the trunks. And uh, indeed, I'm making them r rather simplistic vertical uh, trunks to begin with. And this is where you also get a little bit into, uh, I would say, composition. Because you can see I left a space here, and I'm kind of just finding what looks good to me in terms of adding a few more of these foreground elements until I decide, okay, yeah, that's maybe enough, that's, that's going to look good. Uh, now what I'm going to do now with a slightly lighter line is to begin to draw a, uh, a secondary layer that's further back, and this I'm going to be coloring in with a, a blue marker. I want to sort of stress at the outset that um, I'm doing this with markers, you know, with pencil and markers, but you could do this uh, with almost any uh, medium. You could follow the principles that I've set forth here. Certainly, you could do this digitally. And you're going to see eventually that this becomes a, um, in my case, a sort of a blue layer. One thing to keep in mind is that this, this sort of area of trees that's further away, um, in order to make them seem further away, you have to make each one of the trunks a little narrower. Um, and that's just, you know, has to do with perspective in terms of, you know, if someone is standing very far away, they appear to be smaller. So these, these trees need to be narrower in width. Um, probably self-evident, but uh, sometimes you can forget these things and you end up with um, very wide, you know, trunks that are uh, supposed to be further away, and it, it can kind of, wor you know, you're working against, uh, working against uh, nature in a way. If you if you start getting too many large trees in this secondary background area, well, I'm almost ready to start uh, adding a bit a bit of color. My feeling is that the black, this black foreground area should kind of come last, um, and that I should actually do the lighter area of this uh, mid-ground of trees first. And so that's what I'm going to do right now. Hang on a second, I'm going to grab a, um, <clears throat> a blue marker so as to begin doing this uh, kind of mid-ground area of tree trunks. Okay, so I've got a marker of a fairly pale uh, shade of blue. And you're going to see me going in, for now I'm going to do this real time, but uh, very quickly I'm going to go into uh, time lapse. And you can see me uh, coloring in this uh, mid-ground area of trees. Looking very simplistic for now, um, because I haven't 
added any uh, sort of individual branches and stuff. But even just getting started with uh, this, these kind of vertical lines, I think you can begin to see the effect that we're going to be heading towards with um, this illustration of a forest. And like I said, I'm using markers, but you could, you could do this digitally, you could do this with watercolor, uh, you could do a black and white um, illustration all in pencil. You know, you would just, this part that I'm making blue would be sort of a mid-tone gray uh, in a drawing like that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off this part of it in time lapse, and we'll be back to add a little more detail. Okay, so now that I've got that done, I'm going to go in now and start adding um, individual branches. Um, and, you know, different trees, <coughs> branches grow in different ways, but uh, if you go to the forest, you might notice that there are a lot of sort of, sort of stubby little short branches um, that you can toss in at, uh, you know, hopefully slightly irregular intervals. Uh, and that's an easy way of, of beginning to, you know, dip your toe in the water of, uh, of getting the details going because it's so easy to do you know you, you almost uh, don't even have to think about it too much I'm just you can see me tossing on these little bits and already they're instead of just vertical lines it's starting to look a little more like uh, actual trees let me zoom in just a little bit so that you can see um, some of the details better so now that I've got some of that uh, stuff in there I'm going to start adding um, branches that have leaves on them uh, and this is where things, you know, you, you start to ha need to have a little more patience. Uh, uh, but my approach is not to try to draw every single individual leaf, but to get a little bit uh, impressionistic. In fact, this, my advice in drawing any kind of a forest scene is to allow yourself to get a little bit uh, impressionistic, uh, simplifying things to whatever degree you can. Um, you do want to pay attention to, like, where are these branches coming from? You know, there's certain areas where you couldn't imagine there being any leaves if you haven't got a tree trunk nearby enough to support those leaves. So you have to sort of s stay focused on that kind of stuff. But otherwise, um, yeah, you can feel fairly free to just start tossing in little shapes. I, th I find that uh, having the leaves go in a, in, in a vaguely downward direction uh, is a good way of, of representing nature. It seems a little more natural, uh, but of course there's lots of different types of trees and I suppose sometimes the branches are heading upwards. Um, I, I think maybe it's just that the, 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 the idea of gravity working on the leaves, to me it feels a little more natural to have them sloping downward. In any case, you can see how I would begin adding in this extra level of detail. Um, but I'm going to keep most of the branch stuff up near the top of the illustration. I may, toward the end, bring in a bit more uh, lower down. Let's see, if I'm, am I already starting to leave the frame? Yeah, i got to pay attention. To <laughs> Sometimes I start drawing outside of the video frame, and I keep talking about what I'm doing and nobody can see. Um, but yeah, I think this gives you the basic idea of how you can, you know, and I didn't even put down pencil markings here, right? I mean, this is all totally improvised, um, and I, you can kind of get away with it uh, in terms of uh, spontaneously tossing in little areas of blue. And I should say I've chosen blue, but you wouldn't have to make it blue. You could choose almost any color you want. I'm sure, you know, a, a greenish uh, shade would be very natural in a wooded area, but I can even imagine a, a, a brown. You know, the key thing is to keep it into this mid-tone range. You don't want it to be uh, too dark. I'm going to go ahead and finish up this stuff throughout the illustration, and then it might be time to actually move on to the foreground, uh, uh, adding that jet black silhouette of the foreground trees. Okay, and I guess I should point out that I did uh, add a bit of foliage down towards the bottom of the illustration as well, not limiting it uh, to the top. Uh, but again, I'm not putting anything down in pencil to begin with. It's all uh, largely 
improvise. Now I'm going to take just a, an ordinary Sharpie uh, and begin to uh, add a black outline to these foreground elements. Um, one of the nice things about drawing trees or scenes from nature is that you don't have to draw perfectly straight lines. In fact, uh, the more wobbly or uneven uh, the better, really. So uh, this is a great one for those of you who are unsure of the steadiness of uh, your lines. Um, but you can see me really just going in and uh, going over those initial lines that I had put down way back at the beginning of the video. Then of course what I'm going to be doing is just darkening this all in. Um, let me go ahead and do some of this in time lapse because it <laughs> won't be a lot of fun uh, to watch in real time. All right, so I've zoomed in just a little uh, so that you can see the details as I begin to add them. And really, we're going to be doing quite similar things uh, on this foreground uh, area, adding, uh, as I started with uh, on the other trees, these little sort of uh, broken branches and uh, slight imperfections that uh, are just a nice way, I find, of getting started before you uh, get into adding leaves and stuff like that. Um, but you can see that this is a slightly uh, exaggerated level of silhouette. You know, if you were actually standing in a real wooded area, would you see any, you know, silhouette quite as dark as this? Probably not. And uh, I suppose this, this whole technique that I'm showing you is based on you having a, a willingness to... Um, simplify things a little bit, you know, those of you who are looking for a quick and um, simple way of rendering a forest, I think this is not a bad way of doing it. Um, if you want to do like a photorealistic illustration uh, of a forest, well that's a whole different uh, topic and uh, trust me, it's going to take you hours <laughs> to do that. So I'm going in on top here and adding just a little bit of um, foliage coming in. I suppose that since these are closer to you, uh, if you're going to make individual leaves or whatever, that uh, they should be a little larger than the ones that you made uh, previously. But uh, you don't, you don't want to cover up all the work that you did before, right? I mean, you want that still to be visible. So uh, I'm going to take my time. Uh, but I might say, let's say a branch is coming from off to one side here, just to uh, add a little more visual interest to this foreground element. Uh, again, a lot of this becomes about composition, your sense of um, what will improve the composition, make it a little more interesting. But I th hopefully you can see why I decided to do the sort of mid-tone area of blue first, um, and have that in the background so that this black stuff comes in front of it and it sort of um, is, uh, you know, it's, it's put, it's laid down with a, a sense of filling in gaps uh, where there's space for, for more detail to come in the foreground. Now you could do it the other way around. I suppose you could do the black area first. I'm going to come down here and do something that looks a little bit like a, a fern. And, you know, it's surprising how the level of detail that you can get with a, just a Sharpie. And uh, if you prefer to use, um, you know, a fine-tipped black uh, artist's marker, you're, well, you're just going to get even more detail. Uh, but I thought it would just be fun to show you again. If you needed to do something like this really quickly, uh, it's surprising how much you can get away with just a humble uh, Sharpie to uh, finish off your illustration. Well, I think you can see where I'm going with this, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish off uh, the foreground elements just with my Sharpie. I'm going to challenge myself not to even use uh, an, uh, a fine-tipped art pen uh, during this part of the illustration. And then we're going to be back to do one final element that I think could add uh, one last uh, feeling of depth. Uh, to this illustration. So let's go ahead and finish this off in time lapse and I will be right back.
Okay, so I finished up darkening up that foreground, and you can see, uh, though it's not uh, super realistic, it's a little stylized, it really does help to get some clarity in here between this silhouetted foreground and this midground. Now what I've got here is a even paler shade of uh, blue. Uh, if you can find whatever marker you've used or watercolor or whatever you used for this midground, if you can find a slightly paler shade, you can come in and do a very distant layer uh, for the super deep background. I would say this is optional. You don't absolutely need to uh, apply this final layer, but I wanted you to see um, what can happen if you get like a third super distant layer. And this time I'm not even using any pencil uh, at all. I'm just uh, going in and using my kind of compositional instincts to uh, say where could we use a, uh, a third layer. And if you wanted to, you could even get sort of, uh, you know, like a hill or something back here where you, you create a, a third layer of ground uh, that's visible between uh, the trees. And that, my friends, is basically it. I'm going to do just some very thin ones to help you imagine, you know, super distant trees. Um, as with so many things related to art, uh, you got to know when to stop. You know, if you just keep going and going and going, you might actually uh, overwork your illustration, which I am probably in danger of doing right now. So let's go ahead and say that this is complete. I really hope you enjoyed my little system here for drawing a uh, wooded uh, forest background, but give me a moment because I want to go grab my books so that I can say thank you to those of you who have chosen to support me by getting them, like The Drawing Lesson, my graphic novel that teaches you how to draw, uh, my latest book, The Two Pencil Method, which shows you a lot of uh, information about drawing uh, landscape type scenes, as you saw in the video today, uh, and Mastering Manga, my whole series of books, uh, one, two, and three, on how to draw any manga style. Uh, really cannot say thank you enough to those of you who support me by getting those books, but let's go ahead and lay down this Sharpie. <laughs> I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.